Hello again, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. 6.22 a.m. near my time where I live in Illinois. My work schedule has been changed again, and now I'm working 9 to 4 and 9 to 5, so i got plenty of time. And, uh, oh, brethren, I love you so much. And prayed for all of you. Who I'm aware of, you know, Ed Carson, uh, Alexander, Brother Alexander, uh, Matthew Goyen. Brother Matthew, you see this? Please, reach out and get a hold of me, brother. I, I would love to chance to fellowship with you. Please. You know, uh, Brother Alan Allen, um, Brother Michael D'Angelo, uh, Brother Peter Coppola, uh, Brother Jeff Jones, Brother Jeff Allen. Uh, Brother Bob, um, Brother Justin, Brother uh, Aaron. Um, oh, there are just, just so many of you I love so much and pray for every day. And um, can't wait to see all of you when we are caught up. Can't wait. But... Um, Anyway, brethren, um, I have been made aware that uh, the heir apparent to everybody's favorite Jesuit and mine has discovered our brother Bob's live stream, his channel. And unfortunately, it may be just a matter of time before the heir apparent and myself might cross paths. <laughs> but um, get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn in your King James Bible to Psalm 52. Psalm 52 in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Get your Bible. Follow me along in the scriptures we will look at briefly this morning. This ain't going to be a two and a half hour video, I promise. <clears throat> Psalm 52 in the King James Bible, the real Bible. We read, we're going to read this whole song. Hope you can handle it. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. The tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Hi, you Jesuits, coadjutors. fakes. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Silah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Devouring words. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Get a, whole, get a load of that one. Lo. This is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. And right here, Christian. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. If it wasn't for God's mercy, I wouldn't have woken up today. If it wasn't for God's mercy, I wouldn't have a roof over my head, a job to go to, a wife who keeps me in check, and brethren who keep me in check who I'm accountable to. If it wasn't for the mercy of the Lord, I wouldn't eat, sleep, drink, anything. 
walk upright. Brethren, I am a sinner who is chief. And I am not a good person. And I deserve God's wrath and judgment. But it is by his mercy because I trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. That his mercy endureth forever. And verse 9 in Psalm 52. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. <clears throat> Look at verse 4. Thou lovest all devouring, devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. <clears throat> now, Turn in your King James Bible, the real Bible, of course, to Psalm 56. Psalm 56. We're going to read this entire psalm. I don't know if I've read this in a video before. I don't know. But Psalm 56. Of course, follow me along. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. All these Jesuits and Jesuit coadjutors, these false brethren, these post-fibbers, these heretics, they want to trap you. They want to snare you. Hello, Mr. Heir Apparent, if you see this. Hi. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. Oh, thou most high. <laughs> oh. Oh. You know, right away I think of Brother Brian. <laughs> yeah. Who has many enemies. I have my share of enemies now, too. And if you're truly saved and born again, King James Bible believing Christian, oh, and hey, my name is Brad Paul Avenshein, and I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Just so you know. And Mr. Heir Apparent, if you do happen to come across anything of mine that the Lord has done through me, you may call me Brad, okay? <laughs> anyway, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will, uh, excuse me, beg your pardon. In God, will I praise his word. In God, have I put my trust. I will not Fear what flesh can do unto me. Brethren, with the times approaching, that is something that we need to really settle in our hearts. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God will I praise his word. The King James Bible, the real Bible. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words you know twist them out of shape wrestle with them to try to deceive that kind of thing all their thoughts are against me for evil they gather themselves together armed propaganda teams <laughs> they hide themselves they mark my steps they wait for my soul Oh yeah, get a load of that there, brethren. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? 
Oh, they're referring to the oldest and best manuscripts, right? <laughs> Sorry. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. God is for us, Christian. Truly saved and born again a King James Bible believing Christian? God is for us, even though we mess up. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. My soul from death. Remember that uh, circumcision made without hands, that separation that was not available in the Old Testament? Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? We as witnesses, brethren. Oh, and incidentally, Today is April 1st. Uh, Psalm 53. Uh, <laughs> Happy Atheist Day, by the way. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when God bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Look back at uh, Psalm 56, <clears throat> verse 5. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. And again, <clears throat> in Psalm 52, verse 4. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. As I've said to you, brethren, before, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God and Father, Jesus Christ, um, the Lord has given to me a sinner who is chief, an undeserving sinner who is chief, <laughs> um, has given me to study these tactics done by Antichrist and these deceivers, these Jesuit infiltrators and Jesuits themselves and coadjutors and all the light. You're either saved or you're lost. It's either A or B. There ain't no C. C. Okay? And brethren, when it comes to the Jesuit order, we have to remember something. Okay? I'm going to read to you just a few quotes. Uh, I got this off of a website called A Plain truth.info a plain a p l a n e t r u t h dot info okay uh they are a flat earth forum um uh, whatever good whatever fine but uh this is where i got this i, I printed it out there's uh, it was 17 pages about famous quotes about the jesuit order um I may, I don't think I'm going to put the link in there, but if you watch this, it's a plain truth, all one word, dot info. 
go ahead and check it out, okay? But when it comes to the Jesuit order, brethren, we have to remember a few things. Let's first, number one, I'm going to read a quote to you from Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay? Some of you have heard this before, but we need to keep this in memory. Okay? That's why it's important to study military-type tactics, especially when it comes to Antichrist spirit, which those who are not saved have. You're either saved and have the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling within you and, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, or you serve the God of this world, Satan, and that's a little G-God, okay? Like uh, a dear brother, uh, Brother Justin from Australia sent me this uh, link to this fool, this imbecile, Kenneth Copeland. Uh, oh, boy. But anyway, when it comes to the Jesuit order, we have to remember this. This is a quote from Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte, verbatim. The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. They're a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is a general of an army, the Black Pope. Not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power. Power in its most despotic exercise. Absolute power. Universal power. Power to control the world by the volition of a single man. And who is that man? The Antichrist. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms, and at the same time the greatest and most enormous of abuses. End quote. And also, too, I have to uh, read this, which is um, pertinent for my countrymen. This is by Marquis de Lafayette, French statesman and general. He served in the American Continental Army under the command of General George Washington during the American Revolutionary War. This is another quote. Like I said, go to a plain truth.info and you can find these for yourself. Okay? Listen to this, brethren, and put in uh, your mind. The Jesuitical created biological weapon, the poison crown, otherwise being called the coronavirus, COVID-19. This is a quote from uh, Marquis de Lafayette. It is my opinion that if the liberties of this country, the United States of America, are destroyed... It will be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests. For they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberty. They have instigated most of the wars of Europe. End quote. Here. Go ahead and find that and download it or print it out like I did. Very helpful. Now, remember what we read here just a little while ago? Psalm 56, verses 2, on to verse 6. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. And again, in Psalm 52... Hmm. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? 
The goodness of God endureth continually. The tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Heh, <laughs> gotta read this. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place, and root thee out of the land of the living. Silah. They rest our words. They use military tactics because the Jesuits are a military order. And they use a very subtle tactic of sophistry. Sophistry. Now, I have not looked in the um, Webster's 1828 Dictionary to define sophistry, but I want to share this with you. This is a very good definition of sophistry. Now, Hegel, The Science of Logic. I do not recommend to any of you to read this devil and his yea hath God said and all his uh, big sounding technical words to explain away God and exalt man as God. Sophistry, though. Okay? Uh, I will confess, um, I'm almost done with this book, but I can only take so much of this stuff because oh, this stuff will give you a nosebleed if you read it long enough. Um, unfortunately, I do understand a lot of what he says uh, in this. Um, a lot of what Hegel does, a lot of what these philosophers do, turn to Isaiah chapter 14, okay? Isaiah 14, verses 11 on to verse 14. This is what Hegel does, and philosophers, and these NLPers who rest our words, and all these guys here on YouTube and outside your door. Isaiah 14, verses 11 on to verse 14. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vowels. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? <laughs> Hello! Weaken the nations. How? To his army, the Jesuits. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But let's, uh, let me give you what I think is a really good definition of sophistry. Okay? <laughs> like I said, brethren, I do not recommend you get this. Especially if you're a babe. Ugh. Anyway. From right where my finger is here, all the way down to where the color stuff is, okay? If you want to, go ahead and pause this Pause this and read it, if you can, and do a screenshot and zoom in or whatever. Okay, go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm not going uh, to read where my fingers are. Beg your pardon. Right here. This is what I'm going to read to you. Okay? Pause it and read it and take a screenshot or whatever. Check this out. Check this out. Get ready. 
to get no further than mere grounds. And then again, when he says grounds, um, he means not physical ground, but he means reasons for doing things. That's what these philosophers, especially Hegel, does. Uh, they give dual meaning to words. To get no further than mere grounds, especially on questions of law and morality, is the position and principle of the sophists. Sophistry, as we ordinarily conceive it, is a method of investigation which aims at distorting what is just and true and exhibiting things in a false light. Let's read that again. Sophistry as we unordinarily conceive it is a method of investigation which aims at distorting what is just and true and exhibiting things in a false light. Sophistry. Such, however, is not the proper or primary tendency of sophistry, the standpoint of which is no other than that of Raisonnement, Raisonnement, R A I S O N N E M E N T. The sophists came on the scene at a time when the Greeks had begun to grow dissatisfied with mere authority and tradition and felt the need of intellectual justification for what they were to accept as obliga uh, ob obliga obligatory. obligatory. <laughs> that disteratatum, that this disteratatum, the sophists supplied by teaching their countrymen to seek for the various points of view under which things may be considered. The sophists supplied by teaching their countrymen to seek for the various points of view under which things may be considered. Which points of view are the same as grounds? When he says grounds, he means reasons. But the ground, as we have seen, has no essential and objective principles of its own, and it is easy to discover grounds for what is wrong and immoral as for what is moral and right. Remember, when he says grounds, he's talking the reason of things, okay? Keep that in mind. Upon the observer, therefore, it depends to decide what points are to have the most weight. Subjective. Subjectivity. And people use that method of sophistry when reading this, the King James Bible, the real Bible. The decision in such circumstances is prompted by his individual views and sentiments. Thus, the objective foundation of what ought to have been of absolute and essential obligation, accepted by all, was undermined. And this is from a lost uh, philosopher. Get a load of that. And sophistry by the destruct by the destructive action deservedly brought upon itself the bad name previously mentioned. Socrates, as we all know, met the sophists at every point, not by a bare reassertion of authority and tradition against their arg argumentations, but by showing dialectically how unattainable the mere grounds were. Dialectic. Not mere uh, word or speaking. When he says dialectic, he means logic. Okay? Dual meaning. Twisting mo uh, meaning. What does it say? Remember? In uh, Psalm uh, Psalm 56, was it, that, that we read? Huh? Psalm 56? Come on, work with me, fingers. Psalm 56, verse 5, Every day they rest my words, all their thoughts are against me for evil. <laughs> yeah. But, but by showing dialectically 
how unattainable the mere grounds reasons were. See, he's talking about sophistry, but he himself is using sophistry. <laughs> and by vindicating the obligation of justice and goodness, by reinstating the universal or notion of the will. In the present day, such a method of argumentation is not quite out of fashion, nor is that the case only in the discussion of secular matters. It occurs even in sermons such as those were every po such as those where every possible ground of gratitude to God is propounded. To such pleading, Socrates and Plato would not have scrupled to apply the name of sophistry, for sophistry has nothing to do with what is taught. Get a load of this. That may very possibly be true. Sophistry lies in the formal circumstance of teaching it by grounds which are as available for attack as for defense. Let me read that again. Sophistry lies in the formal circumstance of teaching it by grounds which are as available for attack as for defense. Psalm 56, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Verse 2, Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O Thou Most High. What time I am afraid I will trust in Thee. In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Yeah, let's continue. <clears throat> in a time so rich in reflection and so devoured to reasonment as our own, Whatever that means, I don't know. He must be a poor creature who cannot advance a good ground, good reason, for everything, even for what is worst and most depraved. Get a load of that. He must be a poor creature who cannot advance a good ground, a good reason for everything, even for what is worst and most depraved. Yeah, get a load of that. Everything in the world that has become corrupt has a good ground, a good reason for its corruption. An appeal to grounds, reasons, at first makes the hearer think of beating a retreat. But when experience has taught him the real state of these matters, he closes his ears against them and refuses to be imposed upon any more. <clears throat> Yea, hath God said? <clears throat> that was actually probably, in my opinion, uh, one of the best definitions of sophistry that there is. Let's remember, brethren, here in Psalm 56, verses 9, on to verse 13. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word, in the Lord will I praise his word. In God I have put my trust, in God, not my belief, in God. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Saved and born again. Today we are eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? And of course, where we began today... 
Psalm 52, verses 8 and 9. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. I just wanted to make this very quick video. It's 6.57 now. I got to start getting ready to get going. Uh, I love you, brethren. I've, I'm praying for you. Um, keep these things in mind when you have uh, Jesuits and coadjutors and heretics attacking you, giving attention to you, trying to uh, rest your words. Let them alone. They are the blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, shall they not both fall into the ditch? And in God, I will praise his word. So keep that in mind when you are attacked or when you are dissected dialectically by sophistry and all the endless tactics that Satan is using through his military order, the Jesuits. Okay? Love you. See you later.